Welcome to the Python for Physics 1. I'm making this series of videos for my algebra-based Physics 1 class, but I hope other students will find this series useful if you're using vPython or really any programming language in your Physics 1 course. Um, if you're watching this video, it's because you're in a course that has chosen to use some programming in physics. There's lots of reasons for this. The biggest reason is because offloading a lot of work to the computer helps you, the student, focus on learning the physics. And I hope this series gives you an idea of what that means. Um, vPython is not something to be afraid of. It is a language, well really it's a library, but it's a programming language that was made specifically for students in Physics 1. It's designed to be readable. It's designed to make intuitive sense. It's literally built for first semester physics students. And so when you see a, a code like this in front of you, it's not meant to scare you. It's not meant to impress you. It's meant to be a tool for you to learn. Excuse me. It's meant for it's meant to be a tool for you to use as you learn physics. One of the things you'll notice is that I'm starting with some code already written. That's because in my course, you will always have a code to start with. I am never in a physics one course going to expect you to start writing a code from scratch because that's not the purpose of this course. This is a physics course. We're using the code to support your physics learning. We're not using it to turn you into a master programmer. Although I do hope that you'll learn some programming skills along the way, it's much more useful for you to take an existing code and tweak it, modify it, change it a little bit than it is for you to write the whole thing from a blank page. So I'm gonna do two things right now. I'm gonna up this font size because I have trouble reading this. You might have trouble reading this and I wanna make sure this is accessible. So the folks on Trinket have made an option where you can change the font size. We're gonna go to the hamburger menu over here. I didn't know if you know that's what it's called, but I learned recently this is called the hamburger menu. And we're gonna change the font size to the medium setting. There's also a large setting if you would prefer that. Actually, I think I would prefer large. I'm gonna stick with large. Another thing I can do if I want is go full screen on this um, so I can make it take up the entire window. I think I'll do that so that you don't have any um, unused space being uh, uh, just taken up on your screen. So I've got two lines here. Uh, the first line is necessary at the beginning of every vPython code. This just tells the computer what version of vPython we are using. Um, unless you are updating that version for some reason, like maybe uh, vPython version 4 contains some new um, shapes that you're interested in or, some, or a new function or something, you, you don't need to change this line. You just make sure it's there at the beginning and you don't need to change it. And then this line does two things. First, it's gonna create a sphere and it's gonna give that sphere the name ball. Let's see what that does. We're gonna click on run. Now, the reason it's called vPython is because it's based on the Python programming language with some easy visual elements. When I say easy, what I mean is that if you wanna create a sphere, if you wanna create a three-dimensional sphere with shading and lighting and texturing and all that stuff, all you need to do is say sphere. Um, there's an open parentheses, closed parentheses because sphere is a function and we'll learn more about functions later, but functions always have an open paren, closed paren. And we're giving it the name ball um, so that we can reference that later. This would work just fine without the ball equals, but I just want to, I want you to get in the habit of naming things. When you give something a name in vPython, what you're doing is um, using a snippet of code here. So like saying I want a sphere and then you're saying the name equals the thing on the right. So you kind of want to read these things right to left. On the right side of the equal sign is what you're doing. On the left side of the equal sign is the name that you're giving it. And there's actually a lot that you can do with just this one little command. Um, like I said, it produces a sphere. What I'm doing to rotate it is right clicking inside the canvas and then rotating it around. And I can rotate it around in three dimensions. Um, I can also change some things about the sphere. So when you leave these parentheses blank inside, when you don't put anything in there, it just creates a white sphere of radius one at the location zero, zero, zero. I can also change some things about this. For example, I can change its position. I can change its POS value. 
uh, position here is what's called a vector. So a vector is just a thing in physics that's got three quantities to it, an x component, a y component, and a z component. You can't see the me doing the z motion here because it's pointing into or out of the screen. But for example, if I want this thing to move over to the right, I can say that this thing needs a position of one comma zero comma zero. So this is how you enter a vector in vPython. You use the vector function, and then you say, I need an x component, a y component, and a z component. So when I click run now, I have changed the spheres position. I've moved it to the right. You notice it's to the right of the center now because I've gone from this point over to this point. So now when I right click and rotate, it's rotating about the center of the screen and I can actually see the sphere moving around in that 3D space. I can make that X component be anything I want. Maybe I want it to go all the way out to 10. The window is going to auto scale, so the size of the sphere has not actually changed. It's just being zoomed out. And so I can rotate this thing around and I'm still rotating around in 3D. I could really compare that really well if I made um, another sphere. So let's say I put a sphere at the center. So let's put a center marker here and put its position at 0, 0, 0. So now I'll have one sphere that's at 10, 0, 0 and one that's at 0, 0, 0. So I can click Run. And there I've got my two spheres, one at the center, one out at the edge there. Um, it looks a little boring with both of these being white, so another thing I can do is change their color. So I'm going to put in a comma. I'm going to put enter here just to make this a little bit cleaner. You don't have to do this. You could keep writing off and off and off the edge of the screen. But if you press the enter key, it will know that you're continuing because you haven't closed the parentheses yet here. Um, so I could call this one color equals color dot, let's say, red. So the color here means I'm setting the ball's color. Color here means I'm accessing the library of colors that vPython has, and it knows quite a few colors, including red. So now I've got a red one here, a white one here. Um, I could also give the center one a different color. Maybe I want that one to be the color dot cyan. It knows quite a few color names. Uh, you can either look up the documentation to find out what colors it has or try different color names. It will tell you uh, if it doesn't know what a color name is and then you can change it. So now I've got cyan and red there, which is kind of cool. And you notice that it's the cyan one that's in the center because that's the one at position 0, 0, 0. It's the red one at the edge on the outside because it's got position 10, 0, 0. But maybe I want to test out more about these positions, right? So I could call this one the ball on the right. Let's copy paste this because I could even make this a negative number, right? So physics works with negative numbers a lot. Positive just means going to the right. Negative means going to the left. So now I've got one on the right, one on the left. Oh yeah, I need to change the color. Let's make this one yellow just so I can tell them apart. So again, negative 10 is the yellow one on the left. Positive 10 is the red one on the right. And what I hope you'll notice that I've been doing as I create each of these new spheres is that I'm just copying and pasting. Um, I don't really remember every time what's included in the sphere command. Uh, is it POS? Is it P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N? How do I format the color? Do I separate them with commas or semicolons or anything like that? So what I always do when I have a line of code that's working and I want to make another line of code that does something similar, I never write the second line from scratch. I always take the previous line, copy it, and then paste it here and modify it. It just cuts down on the propensity for me to make a mistake, for me to type something wrong. And honestly, it's a little bit faster. It lets me get along with the point of the activity. And so I always recommend students use the process of copy, paste, modify. It's just, it's on terms of your brain, it's just a lot simpler. So I've got one on the right, one on the, oops, I need to call this one left, don't I? <clears throat> So I've got one on the right, one on the left. Well, I'm missing some other ones, right? I need some on the top and one on the bottom. So let's do that here. Let's change this one to a top value, change this one to a bottom value. And so now that I want to talk about top versus bottom, I don't want to think about the X component. I want to think about the Y component. So maybe I make this Y component five. Maybe I make this Y component negative seven. And I'm just picking numbers for those because this is my um, drawing that I want to create. Let's change this color dot red to color dot 
green, maybe this one into color dot magenta. Because you notice I can make all sorts of arrangements there. And I right click and rotate this around, I can see what's happening to my X and Y axes now. And of course there's a third axis, there's the Z axis. So for that, that's neither right nor left nor top nor bottom. That one is front and back because that's going to be coming toward you or away from you. So let's call this last one front and back. And we'll reset our Y value there to zero, change our Z value, change our Y value there to zero. Let's make this one negative two. So now I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spheres on the screen, each at a different location each of the different value, oops, I put those a little bit too close together. Uh, let's make that one three and negative five. There we go. Oh, and I need to give them different colors too, don't I? What colors have I not used yet? Let's try purple and orange. And now when I right click around, I see these things in 3D. And so just, <clears throat> And so there you have it. In a 10 minute video, we have learned how to create a sphere in 3D, how to place it at a different position, and how to give it a different color. This is going to be incredibly useful to us throughout the semester because ultimately what we want to be able to do is take these spheres, or take any shape really, usually it'll be a sphere, but sometimes it'll be a different shape, and we want to move them around based on what's happening with the physics. And so I think this is really useful. I think it makes physics a lot more, well, at least a lot more colorful and dynamic, and it gives you a lot more insight into how things are working here in 3D, and then later we'll learn how to animate these things using forces and velocity.